This program is sponsored in part by the Elizabethtown College Summer Scholarship, Creative Arts, and Research Projects. Elizabethtown College, educate for service. I myself would say, and it's a pity we don't have another hour to debate this, that quantum mechanics is the greatest intellectual achievement of the 20th century. And I'm aware of molecular biology, I'm aware of the novels of Thomas Mann, I'm aware of the music of Stravinsky, the paintings of Picasso. Nevertheless, quantum mechanics is the greatest intellectual achievement of the 20th century. And the real story, the point of view that I want to <coughs> discuss today is that in fact, it doesn't make any sense because it's wrong. These statements from David Merman and Lee Smolin, respectively, represent quite different attitudes towards quantum mechanics. In this video series, I will show you that Merman's statement is actually the right one per Wilczek's challenge issued in Physics Today 2016. To me, ascending from the ants eye view to the God's eye view of physical reality is the most profound challenge for fundamental physics in the next hundred years. While Smolin is usually spot on with his comments, this particular belief is just wrong. Sorry, Lee. As you will see, quantum mechanics is not only right, but it is beautifully consistent with the other revolution of modern physics, Einstein's theory of relativity. To see how quantum mechanics and relativity, Einstein's double revolution as Smolin calls it, are beautifully self-consistent, you have to rise to Wilczek's challenge and view physical reality adynamically. If you insist on trying to understand quantum mechanics dynamically, you may well come to believe that it's wrong. I'll contrast dynamical and adynamical explanation in the next episode. But first, let me introduce myself and set the stage. I'm your host, Professor Stuckey. I did my PhD thesis in general relativity and began teaching physics at Elizabethtown College in 1988. I started research in the foundations of physics in 1994, and I've taught and published in special relativity, general relativity, quantum mechanics, astrophysics, cosmology, and foundations of physics. You can read more about my work here if you're curious. It's important to note that while I will be showing you some mysteries of modern physics, they all constitute well-established, accepted physics, no wiggy stuff. The way I present the mysteries will likewise be according to convention. Only the manner by which I resolve the mysteries is unique, although even that is in accord with Wilczek's challenge. It seems that many of my colleagues in Foundations of Physics share Smolin's sentiment and believe something is wrong with modern physics. What I will show you is that, quite the contrary, modern physics is amazingly self-consistent and coherent if you look at it adynamically per Wilczek's challenge. But let's start at the beginning. What is physics in a very general sense? Let me use Einstein's own words from his paper, Physics and Reality, 1936, to answer that question. Uh, you may read the relevant excerpt from Einstein's paper in the YouTube video description if you like. This is my summary of Einstein, using air quotes to denote his exact words. Physics is the study of bodily objects moving in three-dimensional space as a function of time under the influence of their mutual forces, the statement of a set of rules. As Einstein pointed out, there are already some assumptions there, so it's best to start with all sense experiences. Uh, I am the spatio-temporal origin of all sense experiences. I assume a subset of all sense experiences represents other perceivers. For example, my perception of you is a subset of my sense experiences, and I will assume you also have sense experiences. In Einstein's words, Partly in conjunction with sense impressions, which are interpreted as signs for sense experiences of others. Therefore, I am the spatio-temporal origin of my sense experiences. I communicate with other human perceivers to construct a model of objective slash physical reality, the real external world, that reconciles the disparate elements of our sense experiences. In Einstein's words, the totality of our sense experiences can be put in order. We then use this model to explore regularities and patterns in the events we perceive. We mathematically describe these regularities and patterns and explore the consequences, experiments. In Einstein's words, operations with concepts and the creation and use of definite functional relations between them and the coordination of sense experiences to these concepts. Now that was a mouthful. We then refine our model of physical reality as necessary to conform to our results. This allows us to explain the past, manipulate physical reality in the present to, to create new technology, for example, and to predict the future. While defining physics all the way down to sense experiences may seem unnecessarily detailed, 
it is crucial to a key unifying concept of modern physics. At the conclusion of the video series, I hope to have convinced you that quantum mechanics and relativity theory result from the fact that no one's sense experiences, such as measurement results, can evidence a favored perspective on the real external world. This is known as no preferred reference frame. Uh, while this may seem innocuous and reasonable, the consequences of no preferred reference frame in modern physics actually end up violating our dynamical experience, the very experience we use to create our model of physical reality to begin with. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Thus, the red pill that I'm offering is not easy to swallow, even though all of the mysteries of modern physics are easily resolved and its underlying coherence is revealed. As an example of dynamical bias in physics, look at this quote from Sean Carroll's blog in 2012. Let's talk about the actual way physics works, as we understand it. Ever since Newton, the paradigm for fundamental physics has been the same and includes three pieces. First, there is the space of states, Basically, a list of all the possible configurations the universe could conceivably be in. Second, there is some particular state representing the universe at some time, typically taken to be the present. Third, there is some rule for saying how the universe evolves with time. You give me the universe now. The laws of physics say what it will become in the future. This way of thinking is just as true for quantum mechanics or general relativity or quantum field theory as it was for Newtonian mechanics or Maxwell's electrodynamics. Ken Wharton and Lee Smolin coined a term for this dynamical view of physics. They call it the Newtonian schema universe. In this video series, I will show you how this dynamical Newtonian schema universe creates puzzles, problems, and paradoxes for modern physics. In each case, I will resolve the mystery using an alternative model of physical reality inspired by another entirely equivalent way to do physics, the Lagrangian or a dynamical approach, which I will explain in the next episode. As pointed out in Wharton's 2015 essay, The Universe is Not a Computer. When examined critically, the Newtonian schema universe assumption is exactly the sort of anthropocentric argument that physicists usually shy away from. It's basically the assumption that the way we humans experience physical reality must be the way the universe actually operates. The goal, therefore, is to rise to Wilczek's challenge, issued in Physics Today in 2016. A recurring theme in natural philosophy is the tension between the God's eye view of reality, comprehended as a whole, and the ant's eye view of human consciousness, which senses a succession of events in time. Since the days of Isaac Newton, the ant's eye view has dominated fundamental physics. We divide our description of the world into dynamical laws that, paradoxically, exist outside of time, according to some and initial conditions on which those laws act. The dynamical laws do not determine which initial conditions describe reality. That division has been enormously useful and successful pragmatically, but it leaves us far short of a full scientific account of the world as we know it. The account it gives, things are what they are because they were what they were, raises the question. Why were things that way and not any other? The God's eye view seems, in light of relativity theory, to be far more natural. To me, ascending from the ant's eye view to the God's eye view of physical reality is the most profound challenge for fundamental physics in the next hundred years. This video series is a very abbreviated and conceptual version of our book by the same name, where we present an extended argument for physicists to rise to Wilczek's challenge and move beyond the dynamical.